After Connecting Point tonight on WGBY at 10 p.m., we'll be premiering New England Legends, a television series that follows adventurer and author Jeff Belanger as he explores these many tales throughout New England, and here's a sneak peek. For almost a century now, a steady stream of first-hand accounts of supernatural experiences have flowed from this mansion. I came in one Saturday afternoon um, to check the building for a hall rent that we had. Mm -hmm. And as I came down this hallway and, and past this hallway here, out of the corner of my eye, there was somebody standing in the kitchen in front of the table about where that stool is. Wow. It was a full black figure, and I kept walking thinking it must be somebody else's in the building. And when I went in to where the other people were setting up, I asked them who was in the kitchen, and they said nobody. There was only two people in the building. That's an amazing part of this experience, when you know you've controlled the situation, you know, or, or especially if you're the only person in the building. Yeah. And, and you, you, know, you look right down there and you, hello? Yeah, I said to myself, stop, go back and look. And yeah. then just that quickly, I said, nope, it's got to be somebody that's in here. Is that unnerving for you? Or is yeah, it was a little. It, it is, what about now? Has it become pretty common here? Yeah, it's, I've seen it quite a few times. He's here now to give us a glimpse of what's to come on this new TV series. Thanks for joining me, Jeff. Thank you. And it's a perfect timing because Halloween tonight Talk about how that kind of coincides with this. Well, Halloween is, is the best time of year for me. Uh, it's, a, it's a tradition that goes back to the ancient, ancient Celts. They believe that the veil between the world of the living and the world of the dead was at its thinnest, and ghosts and monsters and imps and fairies could come into our world and meddle in our affairs. So they would leave out offerings and, and celebrations. Uh, it was also the harvest time and the Celtic New Year. And so this is a tradition that goes back thousands of years that we still celebrate today. Even when the Catholic Church came along and tried to get rid of it, uh, they couldn't. And so they eventually made November 1st All Souls Day, the night before All Hallows Eve or Halloween. So whether you realize it or not, even if you just learned it just now, uh, this is a time of year where we agree that the veil is thin, that it's time to talk about ghosts and monsters, and that uh, it's all around us. And it's a tradition that goes back from one generation to another, all the way back to Europe, thousands of years, and we still carry it today. When I was watching the trailer for New England Legends, I could definitely feel I got the goosebumps. I had to put my jacket on. I was like, ooh. So it's definitely got that almost mysterious factor to it. Sure. Well, there's ancient mysteries all over New England, all over the world. But New England, we've got so much human history here, 10,000 years of human history. You know, since the earliest Native Americans were here, uh, they brought their own myths and legends. Uh, but what's strange is we've got a, a few locations that really shake up what we thought we knew about uh, archaeology, about who was here and when. Uh, for example, one of the locations we visit, America's Stonehenge, seems to be a Celtic calendar in Salem, New Hampshire, that dates back 4,000 years. That's pre-Columbian by a long, long time. And so we wonder, what does this mean? You know, who was here 4,000 years ago? Sites like this make us ask those questions. And there are mysteries. And not only is it an ancient calendar, there seems to be a, a place of sacrifice there. There's literally a place they call sacrificial table. It's like the cutting board in your kitchen with a groove around it, except it's made of stone and it seems to be there to collect blood from some kind of offering. Wow. So. <laughs> And Ready for Halloween. Oh my goodness. I know. But you had mentioned specifically, this isn't just like a ghost hunting story. This is about legends. What's right. the difference? Okay, so a legend is a living, breathing thing. It's something that can't be argued, and it's a story that we all contribute to. Halloween is a legend in a way. Uh, you know, Santa Claus is a legend. Uh, the Easter Bunny. All of these things are stories. So a legend happens when something strange happens to a person, and they talk about it with someone else. And that strange occurrence gets attached to a location, and more people talk about it, and more people talk about it, and eventually that location gets a reputation. The reputation itself is the legend, and it can't be argued. Even though you know, we can argue what a ghost is, we can't argue that there's a word for it in every language, that there's a cultural understanding of it, that there's an archetype for it, that they're in religious texts and history books and so many other places. And so this thing called ghost captivates us and it makes us ask big questions. But we're not just looking for ghosts in New England legends, we're looking for monsters, Bigfoot, we're looking for aliens and UFOs and we're looking for things that bump in the night because these are the things that get to the real root, the real primal parts of who we are. When you ask, you know, are there UFOs out there? What you're really saying is, are we alone in the universe? When you're looking for Bigfoot, you're really asking, do we know every creature that walks the earth with us? And when you talk about ghosts, you're saying, is there life after death? Can we still communicate with our loved ones? These are the, the, the very base questions that all of us ponder at some point in time. 
Now, does this keep you up at night? Because I know if it was me, I'd be like, oh, <laughs> be scared to, you know, check out who's at the door or this doesn't bother you. You know, I've been doing this for decades now okay. and, uh, and, and writing books and, and, and working on different projects related to all things paranormal, strange and unusual. I absolutely love it. Okay. I love every piece of it from, from the way it's gone pop culture uh, to the people who look into it. You know, at the end of the day, all legends are about people, living people. You know, our communities own these legends and sometimes guard them. And it's the kind of thing where someone will tell you the story if they trust you. You know, they don't just share it with anybody. And when someone lets you in, you know, it, it, when they say, I'm going to tell you about this haunted building in my town or this strange things I, I saw in the woods, what they're saying is I trust you. And that trust built this bond. And it's an amazing way to communicate with people. We live in an era with 24-7 news coverage, Twitter, Facebook. People find out about news in seconds. Yeah. But oral tradition, folklore, legends, the process hasn't gone, it's gone unchanged for thousands of years. It just moves a lot faster because of the internet today. But it's still the same process. One person sharing one story to another, connecting one person to another, connecting to a location, to the people who came before us. That's what a legend's all about. So tell us about some of these legends that you'll be talking about in tonight's back-to-back -back episodes. Yeah, well, we start in the spooky Berkshires, and there's no shortage of strange stories around this part of the state. Uh, first, we're going to go to the Houghton Mansion in North Adams, Massachusetts, which is such a great haunt and such a tragic haunt. Uh, you have this horrible accident on August 1st, 1914, where a car rolled down a hill and, and uh, ultimately took two lives within the span of a few hours. Uh, and then the, the chauffeur, John Witters, took his own life the next morning because he was so distraught over what he, he thought was a, the cause of the accident. And then A.C. Houghton died 10 days later. So you've got this very tragic backstory to this building that's gone on to become one of the renowned haunts of New England. And it's been on lots of television shows. People have investigated there. And the reason for that is legend, a story. Everybody wanted to check it out. And while we were there, strange things happened. Uh, I remember they had um, just installed these security cameras all throughout the building. And at one point while we were filming, the front door just slammed shut on its own. No one near it. And we could actually review the, <laughs> the security footage and see that no one was anywhere near it. The door just closed. And it's stuff like that where you say, OK, you've just interviewed very credible people about their paranormal experiences. And you're standing there. You hear the bang of the door. You review it on you know, video camera surveillance. And you say, all right, there's something to this. This is more than just a story. Uh, and then we're also going to look at October Mountain, which is just beautiful, an incredible story uh, itself in the Berkshires. And what fascinates me about it is that there are stories of ghosts up there, Bigfoot sightings that have been documented in the newspapers twice in the 1980s, UFO sightings, uh, every kind of strange creature in this 16,000 acre state forest preserve that's, that's up there. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, piece of woods. But what drew me up there the very first time I went years ago was the story of a, a young uh, girl's ghost who's been seen near the top, they say, near an abandoned cemetery. The first time I went, I never found it. But the second time I went, uh, I had a, a ringer. I had someone who knew where to go. And it occurred to me, we finally found there's this old, lonely cemetery that's up there. And it's about two dozen graves, all dilapidated. The stones are in the ground. They're broken. You can barely read some of them. And we found one of a young girl, aged 10 years, nine months. And it occurred to me, a ghost story brought me all the way up there in the middle of the woods and helped me find this, this lost grave. And then you start to learn people lived here. People died here. They, they forged a living you know, centuries ago, a hard living. These were the, these, these salt of the earth New Englanders that, that helped define our region, uh, who we are today, every piece of us. And we get to touch that, literally touch that in the middle of the woods. It was an incredible experience just to see that and find it. Well, that's exciting. And it's definitely something to look forward to tonight. And that is premiering at 10 o'clock tonight. That's it. Can't wait. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you.